Consider the immediate shifts God brings into our lives. These changes from clearing out the old to embracing the essentials are familiar to us all. Change and growth open new doors, signaling a time for transformation. Life has way and door experiences. Way moments are gradual, involving steps and new habits leading to change. Door moments are sudden, marking instant, significant turns in our journey. This is the year of open doors. Expect sudden changes. Change is coming for you. Are you ready? Yes, because uh, we are in a year with many sudden changes. That's the title of my message today, Sudden Changes. Before I jump into the message, let me just clarify. I was leading a small group last semester, and everybody that was part of my life group will either need to talk to Trenton Toombs, the guy dressing green, or with Jonathan Almeida, the guy that was dressing green, here. Okay, so the like my life group fits in both groups. So please talk to one of the two guys because you want to be part of their life groups this season. Okay, so please, please get connected. Now, let me say what I intend to share this morning regarding the sudden changes, the sudden changes that are going to take place in your life in the year of open doors. When you come out of that hallway, that foyer area, you are in a cozy, tile-made, gray, light gray room space, and you enter through the bifold doors, and you enter this spacious display, uh, area that is like a, a gym, is an auditorium, it is, a again, a court, it's totally different. There is no process in change. It was simply a quick, immediate, sudden change taking place. Because you enter through a door. If I'm telling you that the Lord is making this year the year of open doors, that means change are coming. Changes are coming. I know that some of you guys don't like change. My neighbor is moving out and he was uh, very mad at the changing experience, the pains of change, right? If you ever moved from one house to another, if you ever moved to a city to another, and a lot of us from another nation to another country, it is so painful for some of you guys. I actually enjoy it because I see the good side of it. You clean up the cluttered, right? The, the junk, you become lighter, right? You don't actually care with you, uh, the same junk you have been carrying. Uh, the, the picture that comes to my mind is my mom and my, my dad. Uh, they retire very, very early in life. They retire when they were 45 years old, like literally. And, uh, and they, so they moved. Their first move was from uh, metropolitan area to the farm. So their first house in the farm was packed with so many things. Then they moved from that farm. They moved to a... Uh, uh, like more a countryside city and their second home was much better. Now they have the third change in their lives. They moved to a final uh, house in another farm, now literally in the mountains and it is the best house you can ever be. So relaxing because there's nothing there as it's meant to be. It's meant to have nothing, to be light. Life gets attached to so many things and that's why changes are so good to move us to God's purpose, God's will, God's design. Change, transformation, growth, new doors. These are all synonyms. They are all similar experiences. And if this is the season of open doors, get ready for change. Tell somebody, get ready for change. Come on, I want to hear your voice say, get ready for change. Come on, let's pray, let's pray. Father, fill this room right now with revelation. Fill this room with encouragement, excitement, expectation for good changes that you have prepared for us in 2024. 
Oh, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Isaiah 43, the prophet says, Isaiah 43, I don't think I actually gave you this verse, so let's go. Isaiah 43, verse 18. Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19 says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Verse 19, Behold, I am doing, the Lord is saying, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I'll make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Philippians chapter 3.13, Apostle Paul says, One thing I do, forgetting what lies behind me, and is straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. God has sudden changes for your life. Now, there are areas in our lives that require process in, to take uh, change, to have transformation. Uh, there are uh, experiences in life that are more like the way moments, the long path journey. Some of those path long journeys are actively chosen by new habits and resolutions that little by little slowly start to be part of your life, of your character, right? As you keep doing the same thing, you become what you have developed, your skill. But there are some things that are passive. You actually don't have any choices. For example, slowly but surely, my white hairs are growing. I don't like it, but I don't have an option. It's just taking over my, my hair. I don't like it. It's just the way of life, way. Door moments speak of those immediate changes, that sudden changes. I like to illustrate like this. Dating, courting, engagement are ways. Wedding day is the door. You enter through the door of wedding, and now you have a lifetime way of marriage, door and way. Did you get it? You have uh, four, six, depending on the course, uh, uh, university, college, path to walk, to journey. Graduation night, graduation day is a door that inserts you into the career path, the career way, door and way moments. But the Lord is telling us, this is the year of open doors. So what you should expect in a year of open doors? Sudden changes. Get ready for changes. Get ready for changes. It's coming for you. Good changes. Good changes. The best example of what a door moment means is Acts chapter 9. Conversion. When somebody gives their lives to Jesus. Like Apostle Paul. It's a beautiful illustration because actually it's being, it's using the Gospels in the letters of Paul and in the book of Acts a lot of times because so tangible example of a door experience. We have this persecutor, this guy that is coming after the church. He hates Christians. He, he, he wants to destroy Christianity. And he's going to a town called Damascus, going after to put in jail and if not, even kill some of those Christians. Verse 3 says, now as he went on his way, he had a way. He was on a way of hatred. He was in a way against God. He approached Damascus and suddenly there is a door. Suddenly he speaks of a door experience. So come on, somebody. Are you guys following up? So he was in a way, but he found a door. Suddenly is a adverb connected to door experiences. Suddenly, a light, a door, a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? 
And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. No, 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 no. I'm persecuting the church. I'm persecuting these crazy radical Christians. And Jesus say, no, no, you persecuted them. You persecuted me. So parenthesis is here, somebody. Don't speak bad about the church. Stop with this slandering about the leaders. Don't talk bad about your pastor. Pray for your pastor. I need your prayer. Would you make a, a resolution this year? I'll pray for my pastor every day in my meal time. You don't need to pray long prayers. Just make a simple blessing for your father. Thank you for this meal. We're so thankful, God, for the provision of this day. Bless Pastor Raph and his family in Jesus' name. That's it. That's the only request I make for you for my life. I don't need your money. Literally, I don't need your, uh, uh, your influence. I love to have your friendship, but I really need is your prayers. So don't speak bad about the church. Don't touch the bride to whom the bridegroom gave his life. Say amen to somebody. You're persecuting me, Saul. Verse 6. But rise and enter the city. Enter, enter the door. Enter the city and you will be told what you are to do. We know the rest of the story. Paul is now blind for three days. And the Lord speaks to a brother called Ananias. To actually evangelize the guy that intended previously to kill everybody. So if I was in Ananias, I would make the same questions to the Lord. Lord, are you sure? Like this guy is a terrorist. Like he's coming after us and he wanted me to go there in the net of the snake. Father. And Ananias respond to the Lord and meet Paul. Verse 17. So Ananias departed and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. A door, suddenly a door experience. Conversion changes a, a person's life completely. The Holy Spirit encounter changes the person's life completely. It's not a process. It's suddenly. It's immediate. It's quick. Is a door experience. Then he rose and was baptized. I'm sorry, verse 18. And immediately, something like scales, immediately again, the worded verb, immediately, like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized. Baptism is definitely a door experience. Baptism is that day that your friends, your colleagues, people in your family now know you are Drown in your old story so you can live a resurrected life. People around you may say, I lost my friend. Because now he's all into this Jesus thing. Because now he's all about the church and the friends of the church. And let me say something. That's a door experience. For some of you guys, you must enter through this door. Paul have a suddenly, a immediately experience. Conversion are this experience. Then he rose and was baptized and taking food, he was strengthened. But listen, the persecutor became the persecuted. Acts chapter 9 says, And all who heard Paul preaching were amazed and said, It is not this man who made havoc in Jerusalem and those who call upon his, his name, about the name of Jesus. And has he not come here? For this very purpose, to, to stop the spread of the name of Jesus, to bring them bound before the chief priests. Now he's preaching the gospel. Now, when change changes come to you, persecuted may be followed. That's why I'm preaching to you this morning. Because you need to be aware, prepared, and encouraged, not afraid, aware that. A year of open doors means a year of many changes, sudden changes. People may not understand that change that is taking place in your life. But this is part of a, such a blessed year like 2024. Isaiah 43 verse 19. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. So... I recognize the value of processes. 
those who choose to follow diligence and dedication. This is biblical and correct. There's nothing wrong in being consistent to form new habits. However, some changes must take place at once, immediately. No process at all. You may be hesitant about that principle, but it's also biblical. It is in the Bible in many places, but for those that are Bible students, they know there, there is a special gospel that really like this expression, immediately, suddenly. It is the gospel of Mark. It is used more than 40 times. It is with a, with a purpose. When John Mark wrote the was actually translating, was transcribing what Apostle Peter was narrating to him. Peter was overusing the expression euthus, which is the Greek expression, immediately, which imparts a sense of urgency, immediacy, in the whole narrative of the Gospel of Mark. I'm going to give you just one example. Mark chapter 1, verse 40. And a leper came to him. This man was limited. This man was disabled out of the community for many years. He could not be around society, but he showed up in the crowd around Jesus and he implored Jesus, kneeling, saying to him, if you will, Jesus, you can make me clean. You can heal my illness. Oh, here it is. You're going to take this medicine three times a day for a period of three months. And after you pass this little balm in your skin, you're going to feel more relief. For about a year and a half, probably, we're going to start to see the scars going off. No, 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 no. The Bible says, moved with pity, moved with compassion, Jesus is stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I will. I desire you to be clean. So be clean. This is the ultimatum of God for all our illness. Come on, somebody. I understand there are people that are healed in processes, in steps. That's okay. But I'm promising you, I'm telling you, 2024, it's a year of immediately, of sudden healings. And immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. I know you need some immediately experiences for your own marriage. If this doesn't change now, Pastor, I can't endure one more year. Pastor, if this situation, my finances really doesn't change, I don't know if I can do something anymore. Some leaders, you are leading your group for so many times, for so long, and you're getting discouraged and say, I need a immediate growth in my group. I need to see some multiplication taking place immediately. So Mark highlights the transformative impact of Jesus' ministry and the belief. And it's very interesting. There is a, an intention in the, in the gospel of Mark. It's to create a, a sense of imminent coming of the Lord. Let's do it fast. Let's see the miracles taking place now. Let's believe for the miraculous this year because the Lord is coming back. I want our church to mirror the sense of this impending end of times. I want us to be expecting that in any time, suddenly, with the blink of an eye, we're going to be before the Lord. It won't be a process. The rapture will be suddenly. God wants a rapid transformation, revolution among us. So get ready for the change because Jesus is coming back soon. There are other sudden transformations all over the Bible. Moses, from this selfish and prideful, stuck-up, spoiled man, God changed him. Look what it says in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, that Moses was very meek, very humble, more than all People who were on the face of the earth. You guys remember Moses. He really thought he was the last Coca-Cola in the fridge, right? He was the, the guy. Like, I'm the only one that can really make a difference here. And God put him in a fridge for 40 years in medium. 
so he could learn what meekness is all about. But there is a moment of change, a sudden change, a bush, burning bush encounter that immediately makes him the leader he was always called to be. Zacchaeus, you guys remember the guy, the short uh, follower of Jesus. He came and he, he was greedy. He was probably corrupt, involved with tax collection, uh, going against his own people, the Jews. But the Bible says that he had one night, one talk, one encounter with Jesus. There was a man named Zacchaeus, Luke chapter 19. He was a chief tax collector and he was rich. But verse 8 says, Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. Nobody asked him to do that. That sudden change happened because he had a door experience, an encounter. I have, if I have defrauded anyone, I will restore fourfold. Samaritan woman, she was going after the value that man could give her. Married for six times, for five times, the six men in her life was just living together because she was tired to get married. And now Jesus encountered her. And in the conversation about what thirst is all about, it's not achieving the new uh, uh, title in the workplace. It's not about satisfying your heart with an another love or another romantic relationship. You're never going to quench this thirst just buying the next useless gadget that Apple makes. You need living water. You need to become, you need to become this seeker into a true worshiper. You guys remember the story of John chapter 4. God is his spirit. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming. The Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Verse 26, Jesus said to her, I am the Messiah. There I go, the door experience. She, she learned. She had the encounter with the Savior. What is the result? 39, verse 39, many Samaritans from that town believed in Jesus because of the woman, the woman's testimony. And what was her testimony? He told me everything that I ever did. He knows me. He knows me personally. The Lord knows you. And unless you have this encounter with him, you shouldn't expect more open doors. Always starts with one first encounter. Is the encounter with your Lord, your creator, the one that called you. The author, I love this text in Hebrews, the author, consumer, and perfecter of our faith. You need, I need an encounter with Jesus. So why do you not believe that this door possibility is coming to you why why you're hesitant let me ask you this what is your sense of urgency for your 2024 i'm expecting new things i'm expecting sudden quick immediate changes in my life in my ministry in my family but the world i was reading an article this week uh, New York Times wrote this article about what people are expecting of 2024, the presidential uh, candidates r race. And this, these guys are visiting everywhere, United States, looking, you know, to relevance, to be the top of mind of whoever, you know, is the people are going to vote. And in order to get attention, they are speculating so many crazy things like a new pandemic coming, uh, conspiracies that uh, China is going against us, World War III, literally, like there's this kind of statements being said by these supposedly references of leadership in the nation. Um, others are also uh, speaking of all sorts of conspiracies, even a civil war. So recent polling shows Americans have a gloomer view of the future and express a new openness to the political violence coming for the nation. That's the, the phrase I got from the article. 
And in this article, I, I found really interesting because I do have, my family is Brazilian. So they visit me and they were talking about how they can get out of Brazil. They don't want to live in Latin America anymore. So I could literally change some words of the same phrase and put it, recent polling shows Brazilians, Latinos have a gloomer view of the future and express a new openness to political violence. It's going to be exactly the same. But in this article I was reading, was he speaking how many Americans are actually planning to move out of America? The same way people are thinking to leave their own hometowns around the world, thinking that here is better. Maybe from here, there is better. In this article, coincidentally, the guy that was interviewed, he was planning to move to Brazil. Like the guy says, no, no, I don't want to be here in the election season. I'm moving to Brazil. He is from Iowa. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that crazy? It shows that no matter where you go, no matter what you do, without the burning bush, without coming out of your prideful tree and having a dinner with Jesus, without drinking from the fountain of living waters, Jesus Christ, you always are going to expect the worst. But the Lord is here to bring changes, changes for good. He's planning good things for us. Don't you see? I'm preparing a new thing for you. So I'm waiting for a surprising turn of events this year. I'm waiting for sudden doors of favor, like Job's change of lot. You should want a promotion from jail to the throne, just like Joseph. I'm expecting the hand of favor and compassion that will take my misery, like Naomi and Ruth, and I'll be crowned with favor by Boaz. I'm expecting. The oil of kingship. You should look for God going to pour a new anointing of kingship. While we're taking care of our lives, minding our own business, we'll be going to call by Samuel and the prophet going to pour a new oil upon us out of nowhere suddenly. I'm praying for visions, for dreams again. That will trust us to a new level of authority and relevance. Just like Daniel. Because he, were able, because he was able to interpret the Nebuchadnezzar dream, he was literally promoted as the chief of the very people that once was before taking care of him. Why don't you wish to see the immediate shift of events that will deliver you and your people from destruction, just like Queen Esther? I'm reading the Bible, and I see all those amazing sudden changes of circumstances, shift of lot, of destiny, just because the Lord wants to make a new thing. It is a year of open doors. So get ready for the change. Now, as uh, changes that come to us may be passive, just my white hairs, right? I don't have any control about it. Um, uh, some of the changes may require my participation. So I want you to express your sense of urgency that you really want immediate shifts in your life in three areas that requires your commitment. In other words, these open doors are ahead of us. They're waiting for us to enter. However, some of these changes that I'm going to bring it up to you right now it, it, it require your intentionality. It doesn't need any process. You can start to practice today. As we finish this message, you can talk to your family in the lunchtime how you guys are going to make sudden shifts with the decision toward this point. So three immediate personal changes that has to happen now in your life, in your family, in your godliness. Number one, our prayer intensity. I share about this to our leadership uh, team yesterday. But you as a church, you must make a new resolution of changing. This is not a process. This doesn't need a course to start. You don't need to be graduate of maturity course to make this change. You can make this sudden today change in your Prayer, 
commitment, intensity now. So when we speak words of faith through prayer, based on God's word, our own ears are the first to hear and receive those words. As you declare the truth, your faith gets stronger. The moment we start praying, speaking, the solution, the power of God, His sovereignty over the circumstances, the worry, the doubt, the fear, go away. And now you have a heart ready to experience God's provision. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, you guys know this verse, says, faith comes from hearing. Faith comes from hearing. So you start to preach to yourself. In a sense, prayer has this element of speaking to your soul. You can see this in the Psalms. Many times, the psalmist speaks to the, his soul in the third person. Go to the rest, O my soul, wait in the Lord because He is God. Like you see the interaction with his own heart. Prayer speaks of that. So you make yourself an audience to hear the word of God. Hearing through the word of Christ. Luke chapter 6, 45. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Pray. To fill your heart with good things, with good treasure. Okay? Release the bad treasure. Release the evil out of your heart and fill with good treasure. It is the prayer and worship that changes everything. I love this text. I think it was uh, Trenton that opened last service with this, ver this passage. I was meditating throughout the week. Acts chapter 16, we all know the story. We have Paul and Silas in shackles down in the lowest part of the jail. So we're talking of the Roman uh, uh, jail system. They have like floors, layers. And they were put in the lowest of all the, uh, uh, the jail level. So all the screment, the, the toilet you use above will go down where Paul and Silas were. And they were beaten. They were full of wounds and hurt and pain. In the midnight, the Bible says, Acts chapter 16, 25, Paul and Silas were praying and singing. Everybody say, praying and singing. I need to hear a voice say, praying and singing. They were using the key of David. They were doing what we are supposed to do even when naturally, immediately, there's only stinking circumstances around us. They were praying, singing. Singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. And, verse 26, and what? And what? Read it there for me. And what? Suddenly, suddenly. There was a great earthquake. So the foundations of the prison were shaking. Your goodness is coming after me. Do you know this song, Silas? Oh, I know. Your goodness is coming after. It's coming at. Oh, I know. Come on, let's sing it together. To me, your goodness is coming after. He's coming after. They didn't have Mendes in the drummer, but they have the Lord in the, in the drums. And when the Lord entered the pace, the earthquake came, my friend. And the Bible says, and immediately again, all the doors. Everybody say all the doors. Wake up, somebody close to you. Say all the doors, my brother. All the doors were, were open. You know the secret? Praying and singing. Praying and singing. There is... No other key more powerful than the key of David that opens all the doors and no one will shut. Brain singing, as easy as this. So change your prayer intensity now. Why are you waiting for February? We're waiting for December 2024 to make a resolution. To, no, no, no. That's why I don't talk about resolution in December. I talk resolution now. 
that you will change the intensity, the commitment of your prayer because it opened doors. Not only your doors, all the shackles, all the chains all around you will be open. And everyone's bonds, the Bible says, were unfastened. You want to see that brother free from addiction. You want to see your child completely free from porn. You want to see your marriage protected and free from all this immorality of the world. You want to see everyone's bonds unfastened. So tell somebody, praying and singing. That's it, praying and singing. Change your words. And enter the door of life. Proverbs chapter 4, 23. Keep your heart with all vigilance. For from it flow the springs of life. Put away from your, you crooked speech. And put devious talk far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward. And your gaze be straight before you. Amen. We're not here to just say positive words. We're here to proclaim the words of God. That's why... I wanted to develop the practice of, uh, again, putting in your prayer life the Word of God. The Word of God is powerful, is effective. And you can make this change in your intensity, in your commitment, prayerful life now. Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty. But it shall accomplish that which I purpose. And shall succeed in the things for which I sent it. So get the word and pray the word. You have nothing to pray? Read a psalm out loud. You are not in the mood of reading? So sing a psalm. If you don't want to sing, write something to the Lord in a journal. But if you are not in the writing, for God's sake, hum something. Do some noise. Expr gaze to the Lord. Go outside, look to the greatness of creation and be mesmerized, astonished again with the size of your God compared to this pity, little, stupid circumstance you're facing. Because he's still great, greater than all our troubles. Say a good amen in this house. So today, not tomorrow, not next week, change your prayer intensity. Number two. We're going to change our evangelism confidence. And this is for everybody in this house. This is not only for the leaders. This is not only for the pastor. This is for all of us. Pastor, I don't like it. I don't like to talk about evangelism because it scares me off. I'm not an outgoing person. I'm a very timid. I'm an introspective person. I, 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 that doesn't matter. Pastor, I'm not even very committed right now. It doesn't matter either. Because Peter denied Jesus in Matthew chapter 26. The Bible says that denied Jesus three times. He says in verse 73, certainly, uh, I, I like this. Let's read verse 72. And again, he denied Jesus with an oath. I do not know this man. Verse 73, after a little while, the bystander came up and said to Peter, certainly you too are one of those vine church people for your accent betrays you. Isn't that true or not for us? For sure. You are part of this Christian thing. You go to a life group. Look your accent. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself. I don't know him. I don't know the man. I don't know nothing about Jesus. And immediately a rooster crowed. Crow. So there was a door of denial here. But the story is not the end. There is also an immediately experience for Peter that you will also experience. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. We all know this story. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, there came from heaven. And a sound like a mighty rushing wind. It filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of, of fire appeared to them and rested on them. And each one of them. And Peter was there. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak. Began to speak. You know, many people ask me, Pastor, why speaking? 
Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon people, there are some people that laugh, other people fall on the floor, some people actually cry, other people just feel some goosebumps. And, and there are so many feelings and sensations about being Spirit-filled. But biblically speaking, you should speak. If you are a Spirit-filled person, God is empowering you to speak. I know he spo they spoke, they, they uh, actually had the, the powerful, heavenly language, speaking in tongues here, which is amazing. I want you to have it. But more than that, I want you to speak. And this is an experience that the Lord is making you to have this year. So get ready. Because a sudden, mighty, rushing wind is coming upon you. And you will speak. You know the story, the result of that is in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter spoke, spoke to the crowd. He put himself publicly as a committed follower of Christ. And he spoke. He did not deny anymore. He spoke. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We're going to have a sudden change this year. Our evangelism confidence will be different. We're going to go and knock the door. We're going to go after the daughters and sons of peace. We're going to share with our friends the Grace and Peace Project. We're going to pray for our family to come and join one of our life groups. We're going to have a different Change evangelism confidence. Number three, our unity level. We don't need process for that. We don't need step by step. Actually, we don't need even Francis Chain to preach until unity for our church. By the way, we brought Francis Chain here. And he was preaching on unity. And it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference unless we make the decision today about our unity level. Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. And no city or house divided against itself will stand. Jesus was speaking about the kingdom of Satan. He was speaking about hell. He's saying that hell in the end always loses. The gates of hell can never prevail because... Hell is divided against itself. Maybe you heard when you were, you know, in your Pentecostal church experience that hell and the devil, he is always very organized. Like he's always, you know, with this uh, uh, intricate and intelligent system of communication, you know, uh, sharing information with all the demons all the time. But let me tell you something. This is not like this. Hell is extremely divided. They actually dispute territories. If you ever watched a mafia movie, hell is just like that. Like the little guy, you know, that carries the little drugs here and there. He's just waiting an opportunity to kill, to kill the big boss all the time. All the time. Hell is just like that. That's why hell will never prevail. But do you know families like that too? Do you know families like that, that there is a constant division? Do you know churches that unfortunately... For self-interest, never thinking about the church itself to the little one, to the little sheep. They just think about their own benefit, interest, how they can actually get gain out of it, how they can keep themselves comfort while the little one is suffering. I know places that also do not prevail. But the Lord is telling us there is a shift coming and you're not going to be process, processual. You're not going to be a transition. You're going to be a sudden change. Verse 30, whoever is not with me, Jesus says, is against me. And whoever does not gather with me is scatters. Therefore, Vine Church will not ignore the hard conversations. We will not postpone processes that are meant to have happened long ago. Vine Church, we will correct the wrong courses. We will disciple and if necessary, discipline the inappropriate behaviors. Look, listen carefully. The goal is always disciple making. Disciple making is for change, transformation, growth. 
But sometimes some changes only happen when there is discipline. If it is an issue, it must be fixed. And if it is a sin problem, it must be corrected with grace. Because God wants us with a new unity. God wants to make a shift, a sudden change in our unity as a body of Christ. Romans chapter 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. What you like, the colors you pick, the flavors or the dishes you prefer. It's not about your own interest. But the kingdom of God is all about righteousness that we have received in Christ Jesus. It is peace. It is joy. And the bond of connection is the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. So, sectarianism, division within the church only hinders our mission and effectiveness. A family, a church, a business. Anything that is divided is it lacks and lacks unity can be compared to a house that is built on a weak and cracked foundation. Making susceptible to failure and eventual collapse. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3. So I am very much eager this year to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. That's the only way, the only way we're going to enjoy all the open doors the Lord already set before us. Would you stand up right now, please? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3 keeps saying, verse 4, there is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. Paul keeps writing, one Lord. I'm not the owner of myself. I'm not the owner of the church. There's no boss and employee relationship here. We are all brothers. We are all servants of the same Lord. Come on, somebody. One faith, one baptism, one God. And Paul says in verse 6, one Father of all. We're brothers and sisters. We want to fulfill God's purpose. We want to see Southwest Florida rich with the message of grace. We want to see our life groups multiplying disciples who is over all and through all and in all. Verse 7. Aware that we are united by the same lordship. We are united by the same fatherhood. Our father is our God almighty. We need to consider that the unity doesn't mean uniformity. I'll say that again. That deserves a a post. I'll say a Twitter, but there's no Twitter anymore. It deserves a post. Unity doesn't mean uniformity. Because Paul says in verse 7, Grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. I need you. You need me. We need each other. We're going to see changes, sudden changes in our church, those changes, God himself prepare for us. Doors are open. Say amen. But there are changes that you and I must be intentional. To our families, to our relationship in the life of bro. our prayer intensity, our evangelism confidence, and our unity. Our Yo, unity. What was Would you close your eyes right now? Talks? And maybe you have your family around you. Maybe you want to say this to your spouse. Maybe you want to say this to your life group leader that is close to you. Maybe you have your life group around you. Maybe you want to say this to your parents. You know what, Dad? You, you know what, Mom? I want to I wanna make a change this year in my prayer. I want to make a change in my confidence to proclaim the gospel. Maybe you want to no. pray together with someone and say, you know what? We're going to be united like we were never before. We're going to get a new level of unity as a church. If I could be down there with you right now, that's my prayer with, with you. I am making a personal commitment to lead our church in a never experienced before unity. 
because I know there's power when we are one. So, Father, I bless. I bless your people this morning. We're so expectant, God, of amazing Explain good things. You already prepared for us. The prophet said, and we agree here on earth. Behold, I am doing a new thing. So, piano and the drums, I mean. so Father, for this promise, Now I go we say amen. We're ready for the new things. We're ready for the sudden, immediate, quick changes that are going to take place in our lives, families, in our church. Father, we are ready. We want to enter these doors. We're going to go through it, Father, with confidence that you have good plans for us. We're not like the world, expecting disarray, expecting World War III or civil war. We're not waiting for this. We're waiting for your return, Jesus. We're waiting for your return very, very soon. And until then, Father, until then, today, We want to pray more. Come on, say this to the Lord with your own words. God, I want to pray more this year. Father, I want to meet you. I want to encounter you every single day. Father, I commit myself to seek you like I never sought you before. I want to ask. I want to seek. I want to knock until it opens. Because I know that whoever asks, receives. Whoever seeks, finds. Whoever knocks, it will be open. Father, I am a man and a woman of God that believes that you are the rewarder of those that seeks after you. So here I am, Father. I want to seek you, Lord. Father, I also make a decision. Come on, use your own words. Say to him, Father, I really want to evangelize. I want to, I want to be more bold about my faith. I want to proclaim the gospel. I want to evangelize my friends. Father, and I want to be more confident, more confident. Say this to the Lord. Say, God, I make a decision right now, a change in my approach over my friends, my family. I want to proclaim. I want to invite them to my life group. Say this to the Lord. I will proclaim your gospel because that is the message that change saves, saved me. And I know it's powerful to save whoever believes. Oh, hallelujah. My worship team is already playing the instruments, only, only instruments. Would you right now please lift it up your hands if you can. Our third important decision is about our unity as a church. And I want to pray over you right now. Because I know the Lord is entrusting me as your pastor. The burden, the challenge to make us one. To experience what the word of God says. The power of unity. So Father, I declare right now over this family that is divided. Over this father and son, this mom and daughter that is not finding common denominator. I declare unity right now. I declare the kingdom of God that is all about righteousness. It's all about peace. It's all about the joy in the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray over this life group leader right now. I pray over my brothers and sisters that are leading every aspect of the church. I pray, Father, may the kingdom of God be the culture of this house. May the joy of the Spirit, may the peace of the Spirit, may the righteousness of grace, God, be the bond in the Holy Spirit in which we stand as one. Right now, Father, as a man of God, I pray over your people, God. We are one body. We are one body. United in the Spirit. We are servants of one Lord. We have one faith. We have one baptism. You are our God. You are our Father. So, Father, release upon us this sudden change in our unity as a church. Oh, I pray in Jesus' name. 